Hey everybody, it's Jeremy. Welcome back to Tetch EA Tetragrammaton, where we are playing Ur. Oof. This is turn 184. Let's jump into things. Okay, so. The first, like the most important thing we have basically every turn from now on is to check is Purgatory still up? And we can see right there were no, no portents. Um, purgatory strikes some creatures. So Purgatory is still up. Okay. Um, so cool. Great. Purgatory still up. We move into our normal mode and we start checking what happens with each of the things. We only have one assassination attempt. Our customary um, arrow <laughs> uh, strikes a vampire. Vampire survives. Perfectly fine. Um, and so we are 1-0 on assassinations. We don't have anything else. And then we have two horror attacks this turn. Um, we have a Gudu attacked by a Maker of Ruins. And these things are crazy because they have this massive tremor. It, um, super high HP, just incredibly high damage, armor negating, um, claws... And uh, there, this this guy is probably one of the scariest doom horrors. No elemental defenses, I guess, but he is stun immune. So, no way that oh, this dies immediately. Okay, and then our god gets attacked by a Gortide Horror. Okay, so Gortide Horrors, um, we tend to have decent uh, chances against with our god because we hit relatively hard. We just have to have two turns that are good turns. Iron Skin, Temper Flesh. Or we can spend a whole bunch of gems... Casting Earth Elemental. And then we're going to stand here and not do anything. I've said it a thousand times. I'll say it again. The AI should be intelligent enough to walk around to an opening and attack from there. Like, there are... There are... Eight open squares on the or eight squares on the Gortide Horror. We have eight models. This should not be an issue. All eight of these should surround this creature and our god should kill the Gortide Horror without problem. Instead This is legitimately this a lot of things in this game, I think, are amazing, right? Because they come down to player ingenuity and um, surprises and planning and strategy and just guesswork. And it's great. It's fantastic. It's awesome. Like, And then there's the, you know, the luck of the dice and, and all that good, good shit. Fantastic multiplayer game. This type of shit is just, this is just limitations of the system, right? This is just AI. This is coding. No one, no one in the game, and, and if you, it, no one in the community, I think, would realistically defend that this is the way it should work, right? I think anyone who tried, tries to say that is arguing in bad faith. Because I think everyone would legitimately go, no, of course it makes sense that they should just walk around and, and fill the spaces, right, to attack the creature. Anyone, anyone arguing against that is arguing in bad faith. Um, they're, they're just trolling. So, this is just, this is not a, oh, working as intended. And if it is, no, I, I can't imagine that it uh, that it is. This is just a limitation of the AI, a, li a limitation of the coding. And this is what kind of like makes me sad about Dominions. There are certain things that I think about Dominions would be so amazing if it had a little bit more oomph behind it. And this isn't to, this isn't to be critical of the developers. I think the developers have done an amazing job with what they have, right? But 
to my understanding, the dev team for this is a very small team, like two or three people, right? Um, and there's only so much that they can do on their own while also continuing to push out new content, etc. But, yeah, that's, that's to be expected. This battle, if my god had ever gotten to combat with the Gortide Horror, would not have been a problem. And my god should have gotten into combat with the Gortide Horror. Like, it's one thing, I can I can get the, the scenario where you flood the, you know, because I mean, I've done it before, I've done it plenty of times before, when you send in a super combatant and um, the, the enemy is unable to get to that super combatant because they flooded the field with chaff or, or what have you, right? Okay, sure, that's, that's a mechanic. I still think that, I still think that um, there should be ways around that, right? Like, trampling units or things like that or units that are just larger should be able to push through their own units but that i can see being debated right that is a mechanic that i think is an interesting idea but i could see pros and cons to it i could see people saying yeah that sounds cool or no it doesn't sound cool this isn't a mechanic this is just a limitation of the system where the ai is not smart enough to walk around step into the spot that is available and attack it and that's frustrating so so we lose our god in in a pretty i don't want to say like cli this is not climactic right but this is potentially the the end of the game right um and every resource we don't have access to in this case being our blessed now right is a big deal so this this type of loss is frustrating but at the end of the day whatever it is what it is so we are 0-2 against Horrors this turn. And then we have two battles against Relay. Uh, not really battles per se. They are just Relay um, fucking around with us. So one raiding back the Divine Ocean. And then two uh, knocking us off of Monarch Woods. Which is perfectly perfectly understandable. So 0-2 on, on both of those. And then we have a bunch of Lunkin battles. So we attacked in Ivermore and we bounced hard, right? So Ivanmore is way over here. Um, I was hoping we could like maybe pop in and, and start to, to screw up some of his economy now, but that is not the case. Uh, we hit Hall Woods, knocked everything off Hall Woods, so that's good. There was only a Thrall left. I think he pulled everything back to Perenna. Because he owned Underspring previously, so I think he just walked through Underspring to Perenna. Um, we lost Chibia. We got hit in Bakar and lost that against some Vampire Lords. Unfortunate. We took Jibero. We got hit in Dragonscale Mountains and lost that. Uh, we pushed him off Ur. And this is really really kind of like um you know the one of those pyrrhic victory moments this is a bunch of bunch of golems and they're just here to soul slay our liches and they get to before we get to them and deal the damage required to knock them back from whence they have came Ooh, this one's Taking a while to get hit. There we go. So we lose two liches for that. Um, is what it is. We hit in Yellow Caves win. We hit in Realm of Silence win. We hit in Troia win. Um, we hit in Coast Haven win. We hit in Koenberg win. And we hit in Belagor win. So this is us raiding back out, trying to you know, take, take, retake, retake control of our lands. Um, we were 10 and 4 on battles against Lanka this turn. So that's pretty good. No real big unexpected events. We, we lose population in Titan's Breath, but whatever. Uh, misfortune in Realm of Silence. Got some gold in Troia. And an assassination attempt on Gudu 06, which we actually lose to a, a ghost. That's unfortunate. Um, and then we gain some Dominion. We're under siege in a number of locations. Um, reforming a bunch of immortals and this is basically the turn right the turn is 
if I've counted correctly, the turn is 21 attacks, 21 counter raids of trying to take back the majority of our heartland. A bunch of vampires going out, um, mostly vampires, but a bunch of liches now that we've opened up Ur as well. Liches um, going all over the place, uh, just kind of trying to push him back. But we can see right next to our capital, he has put up a citadel. So I believe this is with Conjuration. It's not Wizard's Tower. It might be Wizard's Tower. Tower. A tall, impregnable stone tower from the ground in any friendly province within range. The administrative facilities are not the same, like they're not the same as a citadel, but it is very icky, icky. So, um, Lanka has put, basically, like, not taking down Purgatory immediately, so Lanka has put up a Wizard's Tower. And I'm kind of suspicious about this, because uh, he's done one over in the Wetlands as well. I don't remember if he did that this turn or last turn, but I think this might be Lanka's tactic. Lanka might be stalling for time. Um, I don't know if Lanka just doesn't think that they have the fire gems to do this, or actually doesn't have the fire gems because they've been using them, potentially. Um, but it, I think the tactic that Lanka is going to go for is, is to start putting up things on the border of my dominion and contain my dominion. So we're probably going to need to try to do what we can to counter that, right? To try to push our dominion. But in order to really make use of any any of those opportunities, we've got to raid our... we got to take our lands back. So that's the main push. Probably for the next three turns, two or three turns. This one is 21 attacks, then another 21-ish here, probably next turn. Um, if these are relatively successful and we still have Purgatory up, mind you. Um... And then any fringe area. So probably one and a half turns, really. And then it's a matter of taking what we still have access to uh, and trying to produce from there. And with that, we've got a couple things that we are working on. We are doing some Naiad Warriors in Ur and in Hall... Hallwoods? Yeah, Hallwoods, just to kind of give ourselves a little bit more of a defensive line. Uh, more Kusarikus, more Lamias as well. And then we're also starting to produce more Rings of Returning. Rings of Returning being used to defend ourselves. What I want to start to do is I want to start to get some, maybe some Oogaloos uh, and get them up to be able to start producing more Anzus, right? Uh, that is going to be a bit of a gambit. I do not know if we're going to have the time, but Ring of Returning on my Opkalu. My Opkalu makes an Oogaloo. Um, from there, we probably need to boost. That's probably the best thing that we can do because we don't have any, any air boosters anymore. We lost all of those in the Great Wars. So there's that. Um, so we'll either have to, no, I say we'll, I, I say we'll either have to do X or Y, but it's not really an option of X or Y. So, hmm. Yeah, I don't think we even have a, a ring of wizardry anymore. Because I think we lost that as well in our big push. So, yeah, we're going to have to boost an Oogaloo. So that's going to take a couple turns of air gems unless we alchemize. So we can alchemize. That's an option, right? Um, and all of, this is, all of this is very dependent on getting more gem income back. So raiding our lands back, getting our gem income back, trying to change that gem income into opportunities saving all of our fire basically so that we can try to counter the eventual purgatory counter because that's gonna happen right um and then i don't know try to push our dominion potentially 
try to go back to the idea of what we what we should have what we should have done arguably 20 year 20 20 years ago 20, it feels like 20 years ago 20 turns ago and um just play a defensive game where we have gift of health up we have purgatory up we focus fire down you know um Tessaphon, take it put a temple up focus fire perenna down take it put a temple up um and and basically just inch forward rather than a big multi-grab in a bunch of different directions at the same time very slow methodical pushing our dominion so that purgatory kills anything that comes after us and gift of health keeps anything in ours alive basically that would be the the conceptual plan i don't think we're gonna get there though um uh, like honestly, I, I don't. I, I'm assuming we're gonna lose Purgatory in the next turn or two, but we'll see. So one of the first plans, one of the first things that we're gonna need to do to kind of liberate ourselves, keep ourselves from being in a big, having a big issue, is we need to take Olentova, uh, because he took Olentova right next to Hall Woods, and Olentova actually has. Oh, maybe he moved. That's where he probably moved all his stuff. Not over to Perenna. He probably moved it over to Olentova. So we need to take Olentova because it's got a bunch of storm demons in it and various other things. So we're hitting it with a bunch of... I say we're hitting it with a bunch of... We're hitting it with a couple vampire warriors this turn, right? Just to see if he's got anything patrolling there. And if he does, they're dead. If he doesn't, then we'll sit there and then the next turn we will probably fly in a bunch of the surrounding um, units and maybe even move some stuff in from Hall Woods to try to take that. See how that goes. And that's honestly pretty much it. Um, pretty exciting turn. I say pretty exciting turn. Pretty A lot of movement on this turn. Not a lot of everything else. A lot of attacks. Um, exciting to see Purgatory still up, but I think it's only got so much more time. Anyways, that's going to be it for this turn. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye, everybody.